that it was laid on Jesus. Come on, let's not stop worshiping. I'm trying to give them time to get it together. We got to go into worship right now. God, you are good all the time. And all the time, you are good. Come on, I need to point at the name and say, neighbor, God is good to me. Come on, you didn't tell the right person. Tell them, God is good to me. Come on, tell somebody behind you. Tell them, God is good to me. For your goodness and your mercy towards us. All the praise is for your goodness and your mercy for us. For your goodness, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, and your mercy for us. Oh, oh, oh. 
have some water. Come on, let's bless God for our mother and our father. Minister this stuff, all our elders, our deacons, missionaries, evangelists, mothers, prayer warriors, saints, and friends. Amen. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made it. It is a command for us to rejoice and be glad. I want everybody to lay hand on yourself even now. And repeat after me as loud as you can. I want you to get it in the atmosphere. Just shout out loud, I am somebody. I am important. And there is absolutely nothing that anybody can tell me differently. You are important. And we love you. And we need you to survive. Bless God for my precious wife, Lady Warner. <laughs> takes real good care of me. We're in Luke, we're in John's Gospel, chapter 16. Thank God for our wonderful, wonderful music ministry. Uh, singing so wonderful, playing so skillfully. John's Gospel, chapter 16. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. For the people of God, but such a time as this. John's Gospel, chapter 16. If you have the ability, please stand for the word of God. Amen. Ambassadors, no one should be moving at this time. John's Gospel, chapter 16. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. everybody to join us this good Friday 7.30 p.m. Amen. We'll be doing the seven sayings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I want everybody to come with a mind of worship. We're going to worship the Lord in this place. And you're going to get a word for such a time as this. It's this Friday night. 16 a little while and you will not see me and again a little while and you will see me because I go to the father then some of his disciples said among themselves what is it that he says to us a little while and you will not see me and again I, a little while and you will see me 
And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he says? A little while. We do not know what he is saying. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him. And he said to them, are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said? A little while, then you will not see me. And again, a little while, then you will see me. Most assuredly, I say to you that you will weep and lament. But the world will rejoice and you will be sorrowful. But your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman when she is in labor has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice. And your joy, no one will take from you. You may be seated in the presence of our conquering king. And your joy, no one will take from you. And your joy, no one will take from you. And I want to preach today. Don't let life steal your joy. Come on, you know, until you know, until you make say, hey, but whatever you're going through, don't let life steal your joy. Yes. And I need the five of you who received the right thing, just lift a hand up and say, after all I've been through, I steal that joy. You never let life steal your joy. This community is something, so I got to move on. I've wasted most of my time. And I want to talk to us today about comfort. I want to talk to you about coping. And I want to talk to you about conquering. Comfort, coping, and conquering. And don't let life steal your joy. And in this particular text, we got to understand that this is a chaotic moment in Jesus' ministry. Because this is the moment that his disciples finally realize that he is not going to do what they expected him to do. And the thing that I have learned about people is that people will love you real good as long as you do what they expect you to do. But if your actions deviate from their expectations, People will jump off your bandwagon real quickly. You'd be shocked at how quickly people switch when you don't live up to their expectations. And expectations have a lot to do with satisfaction. Because a lot of times we are satisfied with a product because it met our expectations. And so we even evaluate people. This is a good person. This is a bad person. Based on their ability to live up to how it is that we have defined a good or bad person. So in this pericope of the text, this is the moment that Jesus begins to make his disciples understand. I am not going to do what you thought I would do. Well, well, well. Can I tell you that it is something to have the courage to disappoint people because it does take courage to do so why preacher because people will intimidate you with their expectations so you got to be strong enough to say this time i'm still not gonna do it so therefore to disappoint people who have built their life on expectations becomes difficult. And so Jesus is dealing with men who have walked away from everything to walk with him. 
for three years. I got to move day and night. They have sought to do the master's will. They put all of their money behind it, all of their time behind it. And right in the middle of talking about the kingdom, Jesus started talking about the cross. Yes, sir. Yes, did. And this deviation from kingdom to cross messes with the mind of his followers. Hey, wait a minute. We were with you in the kingdom, but we don't know about this cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You should have told me about this before I gave up my business. You should have told me before I left the family. Has anybody besides me ever felt like God, with all due respect, you could have mentioned to me that my life was going to go through this. Come on, sir. Come on. Come on. You could have sent me a note. You could have given me an email. You could have shot me a text. Maybe a postcard. Or put a sticker on the back of my car. Or something that would have indicated to me that we were going to hit this hole in the road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not a bump, yes. but a hole. And that everything in my life would at some particular point in time go crazy. Yes. And it's amazing what God does not mention to us. You could have mentioned to me, God, that I was going to go through a dry season. You could have mentioned to me that my loved one was going to die before I prepared for it. You, you could have mentioned to me that my child would have some challenges. You, you, you could have mentioned to me that the company that I work for might downsize and cause me to wonder what's going to happen to me next. Oh God, what's really going on in my life? And all of a sudden Jesus was leaving and they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We didn't know that you were going to leave us. And he's trying to make them understand that he must go away because if I don't go away, the comforter cannot come. And it's hard to sell them on a comforter that they have not experienced in the face of losing the Christ that they have experienced. And it's a very difficult thing for them to understand that they are losing that they might gain. Yes, sir. That's the book. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Yes, sir. And Jesus is trying to make them understand that I have been with you, but I shall be in you. Hallelujah. And I've done everything I can do by influencing you from the outside. So in order to take you to the next level in your walk with God, I must be in you. A well of living water. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Springing up in you everlasting life. And I have got to get down in you what the Apostle Paul later calls Christ in you, the hope of glory. I got to get on the inside. And when we fully understand this, if there were one thing that you could wisely ask God for, it really shouldn't be a trip around the world. It shouldn't be the house on the hill. No, no, no. If you could get one thing and it was one thing that was wise to ask God for. You should ask God for. Lord, teach me to know your voice. God, help me. Bring me to the point in my life that when you speak, God, I, I know clearly that God has spoken to me. If I can know without doubt, if I could know without wondering, if I could know without debating in my mind, Lord, if I could just know your voice, teach me, God, to know your voice. Mm, God, so that when you speak, 
I'll know when to move. Oh God, when you speak, God, I'll know when to stand still. When you speak to me, God, I'll know when to build. I'll know when to buy. I'll know when to speak. I'll know when to keep my mouth shut. And I'll know when to fight. And I'll know when to hold my peace. Teach me, oh God, to know your voice. Oh God, I need to know your voice so I won't keep making foolish and ridiculous mistakes. Teach me, God, to know your voice so I won't spend years trying to wander into something that I could have directly gone into. Teach me to know your voice because I notice that the people who knew your voice, they walked on water. God, hear me. I, I noticed that the people who knew your voice, their blinded eyes were open. Oh God, they went to the pool and they came up singing, not because the pool was mighty, but because your word is mighty. The people who knew your voice, they got up from the dead. Lord, I want to know your voice. The voice. The voice. I got to know his voice. I got to know his voice. I said, I got to know his voice. We must know his voice. The book starts with his voice. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved on the face of the water, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And we got to understand today that when God speaks, even the elements respond and react. When God speaks. I can cross the Red Sea on dry land. When God speaks, I can overcome my enemies. When God speaks, he makes a way out of no way. Lord, I just want to know your voice. I got to know your voice. Lord, teach me to know your voice. And what the text is saying is that God is going to speak to us through the Holy Ghost. So Jesus is trying to wing them off of his physical presence so that they might embrace him in the spiritual capacity. Well, well, well. And so we got to recognize that Jesus is a comforter. Yeah. Oh God, before y'all heard me, he's a comforter. He is a comforter. And one of the names of the Holy Ghost is a comforter. And if you've ever mourned for real or been around people who mourn, you should notice that there is a place in grief where people cannot go. There's a place in grief where cards cannot reach and flowers don't come to that place. There's a place in grief where nice sayings don't heal. And even though people are there, and yes, we appreciate your presence, but there is a place where only the spirit can get into. It has the ability to go into that place where my soul is torn. Because you have been separated. You need a comforter. When there has been separation, when you have lost something or something has been taken away from you, separation by death, separation by divorce, separation by termination. Anytime you lose something, you are subject to need a comforter. Because we have the tendency to believe that we can't go on with life as we know it today. And only the Holy Ghost, 
I know y'all ain't heard that too much. Can get down in your spirit to let you know that there will be a brighter day. Would you lean over and tell your neighbor, tell him, say, it will be a brighter day. Yes, only the Holy Ghost can get down in your spirit to give you the courage to keep on keeping on. And the Holy Ghost can wipe away the tears that fall from a broken heart. Only the Holy Ghost can rock you to sleep when your mind is in so much turmoil that you can't find rest. Only the Holy Ghost knows what to say to give you the fight you need to get up out of the bed in the morning. I thank you, God, for being the comforter when I thought I was coming unglued. You comforted me when all men forsook me. And if you've ever been comforted by God, just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's something about the Holy Ghost. And it's moving down in my soul. Yes, God. And when Jesus, Sister Redding, when Jesus starts to talk about the Holy Ghost being a comfort, on, the thing that becomes clear in his promise is also a reality. That walking with God does not exempt me from life's challenges. Yes, sir. That being a child of God does not mean that I will not go through separations. That I will not have painful losses yes, in my life. Yes, but it prepares me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It pre-warns me mm -hmm. that there are going to be moments in my life that I am going to need a comforter. My God, my God. Because in reality, they that live godly ah. We will suffer persecution. In reality, life is a few days and full of trouble. In reality, there are moments in days that are so hard to deal with that you can hardly get out of the bed. And if you don't have a comforter, hmm, the chaos of life will eventually overwhelm you. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. Yes, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, please don't let life steal your joy. The comforter is an implication that life is challenging. It is a warning that life is personal. It, it will hit you in places that you cannot ignore. It's a warning that willpower cannot be enough sometimes to sustain you through the chaos of everyday living. And there are times when we're going to need divine assistance. Oh God, there are days if we didn't have comfort. God help me. Let me say it again. There's some days that if God didn't comfort you, you would collapse under the weight of life. Oh God. But God has a way of comforting me. And comforting means that he is going to teach me how to deal with his decisions. Comforting lets me know that God is not going to be Santa Claus. Running up and down, no chimney. Always ready to fulfill my latest request. Comforting is what you need when you have lost something. But coping point number two is what you do when there is something that you wish that you could lose. Help us today. Come closer. Yes, sir. Because there are some things, I know you, your neighbor don't need to know this, but there are some things that life deals you that you just have to learn how to cope with. Yes. That's right. yes. It's something that you want to be different, but now I'm caught in a confusing condition. Uh, uh. And you got to understand that there are some things that don't 
move easily. Come close. But there are some things in our lives that come upon us that do not change overnight. God help me. Everything that turns negative, you just can't get rid of. And oh, somebody needs to hear what I'm saying today. Because there are some things that you just have to buckle your seatbelt and strap yourself in. And say, okay, devil, you got to fight on your hands. Go ahead. Take your best shot. But I got news for you, devil. We fight back. God help me. God help me in here. But you lean over and tell your neighbor, say, I fight back. Because I heard somewhere, don't start nothing. But if somebody starts it with you, you got to finish it. I need the 12 of you to wave your hand and say, I'm going to finish it. Yeah, let the enemy know, I finish it. I don't start it, but I will finish it. God help me. I wish I could find my real church folk. Lean all the way down your road, point at somebody and say, I won't start nothing, but, but I will finish it. God help me in here. We finally woke up. Let me say it to the enemy again. If you start with me, I will finish it. I find this is a good finish. I am a finisher. I finish it. Because it, it, it takes you a while to get to point number two, coping, because we have the tendency to believe that everything that we go that we go through should go away suddenly. But I gotta talk to somebody who's been in a real struggle. Because you have found yourself in a tight spot and you have poured oil on it. Well, well. But it's still standing in your way. All right. you, 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 you've danced on top of his head. Listen at it, listen at it. But it's still a problem yes, sir. Yes, sir. in your everyday life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you, you, you've quoted your favorite scriptures over it. My, 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 my. But it's still, still standing in my way. Yes, sir. And you kept pleading with God, yes. fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Yes. Has anybody ever asked God to fix it? Yes. And he didn't do it overnight. But instead, he said, you got to deal with this. I'm not going to take this out of your life because you got to learn that something you just got to cope with. You, you can't get your stars and stripes and be a general in God's army if you have not learned how to cope with some stuff. You got to cope with the stuff that won't move overnight. You, you got to learn how to deal with some things that didn't change suddenly. You, you, you got to learn how to stay steadfast when things did not get better the next day. You, you, you got to learn that you got to work through some stuff that are not going the way that you planned. So you got to learn how to cope with it. And coping is difficult because we keep wanting God or people to fix it. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I could just find the right person. My God. If God would just send the right person in my That's life. What we say. That's what we say, sir. If yeah. I had the right job. And we keep on waiting for somebody, somebody to fix it. Yeah. But I dare to tell you that there are some things that will not get fixed overnight. And so coping with things that won't move is what made the Apostle Paul pray to God and say there's a thorn 
in my flesh. And I think that I'd be a better preacher if he would just fix this. Oh God, I, I could serve you better if I didn't have to deal with this. Just like some of us do. I could serve you better, Lord, if my finances were better. I could serve you better if I didn't have to deal with this illness. Lord, I could serve you better if I could. If I could. If I could. And at the end of all of that, God says, not now. I'm not going to fix it because I'm using it. God, you got to help me through here before we get out of here. I'm, I'm using the very thing that you are trying to get out of. Is there anybody here? Because you see that our God is a present help in in trouble. Not a present help from trouble. God help me here. And if you really want to see God work in your life, you got to be willing to be in trouble. And somebody is going to hear me after a while. And God says, I'm not going to fix it just now. I'm going to leave you in an uncomfortable situation. And I'm going to teach you how to cope. It's a wonderful thing, ladies and gentlemen, to be able to cope. Because everybody I found out cannot cope. But if you want to walk with God and hear his voice, he will teach you how to cope. And even when you have to cope with some stuff and other people keep telling you, man, if I were you, I hear you, but you're not me. You can't take what I can take because you are not me. I'm learning how to cope with some stuff. So what do you do when these situations that God doesn't fix overnight and it gets uncomfortable and it's not what you expected and some of us are in places right now where you are not destroyed hear me clearly but the possibility is there. Hmm. So now you got to cope with the possibility of what if. Let me say it again. Many of us in this room right now are coping with the possibility of what if. And here's the thing that gets to us. What if? Mm -hmm. And I really could make one bad decision uh, uh, uh. and lose everything. Wow. And so you got to learn how to cope with that. And that's the way that life is. You're saved and God is blessing you. Well, well. And you are now facing what could happen. Yes, sir. And you're looking all around you. And that's why God says, when you pass through the water, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be right yes, with you. When you go through a flood, I'm going to be right there. Because he already knew that there was going to do something. Something was going to happen to take you through some uncomfortable situations. And so we don't like to mention the pain in our lives. Because some people don't want other people to know that they are having a human experience. Oh my God. My God. Stay right there. 
right there. We're too intimidated to admit it. Even though you're saved, you're not exempt from having a human experience. And when you act like you ain't going through nothing, people start to think that you don't have any trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But just so that the folk around you know who you really are, on, huh? would you lean over and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm going through something right now, but I'm coping with it. Tell them again, say, neighbor, neighbor. as a matter of fact, I'm still winning, I'm still winning. while I'm waiting. Oh, that wasn't the right person. They didn't shout. Would you tell somebody and say, I'm still winning? Wow, I'm waiting. And it is not that everything is going right, but I'm learning how to cope with it. And I don't have everything that I like to have, but I have learned how to cope with it. And everything is not the way that I dream. But I'm learning how to cope with it. Because if you never learn how to cope, you will never make it to your destination. Because everything that God doesn't move is an opportunity for us to learn how to cope with it. I'm coping with some stuff. Is there anybody in here who's coping with some stuff? Come on, wave your hand and say, by God's grace, I'm learning how to cope with it. And when you get through knowing God as a comforter, and he teaches you how to cope with it, the final thing that he gives us is after you have suffered a while. That's the part we don't like, but let me say it again. After we have suffered a while, after you have endured hardness as a good soldier, after you made up in your mind, like the Hebrew boys, and say, even if he don't deliver me, I still know that he is able. If I never get my dream house, if I never get the relationship I desire, if I never become a millionaire, I don't know about you, but I promise the Lord that I'm going to hold out and I'll let nothing separate me from his love. And you ought to be able to raise a hand right where you are and say, come what may. I'm still going to walk with God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to survive point number one. You got to see point number two. Because we got to get to point number three. Because there's no need in coping if you're not going to eventually come. You got to learn how to cope. If you're ever going to conquer, if I never had a problem, I would know that he's a problem solver. Is there anybody in here who got a testimony? I could have been dead. I could have given up by now. Oh, but God. I wish I had five people to point at three more people and say, oh, God. Tell them again, say, but God. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. I almost gave up. But oh, God. And there are many winners. But the title of conqueror is reserved for somebody who's gone through many battles and been through many casualties. But they kept on fighting. And finally, yeah. Against all odds, with everything in life going crazy, you finally conquered the thing that you've been fighting for years. 
Come on, lean over and tell the neighbor. Say, oh, oh, oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
that you almost gave up on. But the Lord told me to tell somebody right now who don't have to wait till the battle is over, but you can open up your mouth and you can shout right now. I'm telling the 15 of you, if you shout right now, Ha 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 ha! 
my body, which was broken for you. Take it. Oh, well. This is the blood. My blood of the New Testament.